Sony have some major plans for the next couple of weeks and a potential leak for 2025 as well. Uh, first up, the imminent stuff. This comes from a mix of people, including Kratos voice actor Chris Judge, saying a God of War-related announcement is coming soon, alongside reliable leaker Bill Bill Coon saying he doesn't have anything definitive, but lots of PlayStation stuff is being prepared behind the scenes. He also says fresh news is coming. Um, and alongside that, we have a PlayStation showcase rumor for December, which Jeff Grubb replied to someone on Twitter saying, don't get your hopes up, but there is a wider conversation on a potential thing in December, as the Game Awards are also on December 12th, so there could be Sony-related things at the Game Awards, considering how long they've been waiting to update people. Um, as a couple of potential candidates that I'm going to throw in here as to what it could be, uh, God of War, uh, there, the Greek-era titles for that franchise are rumored to be in the works, and have been for a good few months, um, as a series of remasters all in one big package. That would include God of War 1, 2, and 3, um, the PSP releases, and God of War Ascension. Um, however, the flip side to all of this, um, if we get rid of the whole game-related stuff, but still think about God of War, is the God of War episode of Secret Level. Um, which is out on December 10th. Um, the Chris Judge could just be referring to that, um, which has also been speculated online that, um, that he's sort of able to say there's a God of War related thing coming up because there's general hype around secret level anyway. And um, there's a Warhammer level in there. There's a Sifu level. <laughs> there's a Concord, sorry, a level, there's an episode. There's, um, there's a Concord episode in there as well. Um, so it could just be that. But um, before we get into stuff in 2025, thoughts on the old God of War yeah. or Sony oh. in general? Sony in general, God of War, let's go with that first. Mm. I hope that Greek trilogy happens. And I know it. maybe it's too, nah, I don't want to say controversial. I don't think I've got any controversial takes, truth be told. But I know <laughs> people are sick of remasters from Sony mm. at this point. You know, Horizon. bombed recently as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Horizon Zero Dawn comes out. It's nice to have, but it's not setting the world on fire anymore. I think the God of War trilogy, the original trilogy, and I hope they put Ascension in there as well. Mm. That would be really cool. Um, and the other one, there's another PSP one, I think. I was, but according to this, it's one? all three God of Wars, both PSPs, yes. which is Chains of Olympus, and I forget the other one, but there are two of them. Yes. And then Ascension as well. Yes, yes, yes. That would be sick because a lot of those games, even the original God of War and God of War 2, you can play those on a PlayStation 5, mm. but they're streamed as far as I am aware. I think God of War 3 got a remaster that you don't have to stream, but the point is they're not in a very nice package like you can get Uncharted or whatever. Mm. And those games kick ass to this day. <laughs> I was surprised about how much I liked them as oh, someone yeah, who, yeah. you know, kind of avoided them because they do have this reputation. That isn't unearned of being like the meathead game, right? Where <laughs> Kratos is like the worst version of himself, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. And that indulgence, I'm not saying that is untrue, but I found a lot to enjoy from that era and from the indulgence of Kratos as this bloodthirsty bastard. Who I was going to say, um, the those games work better, like in retrospect. Like yeah. I, I grew up with them. I loved them, like playing them alongside, but obviously, uh, you know, media's moved on, different certain, uh, standards and classes and ways we view whatever has moved on. But if you look at where Kratos ended up, it's like, okay, this is this guy's brutal, horrific, past and it absolutely is a brutal horrific past but it plays phenomenally well and always did um, and I think because you know where he ends up it yeah. almost reframes those originals in a way that is like massively appealing same on the Uncharted side yeah. going like this is Nathan Drake's original adventures um, and look how much he got through before he got to Uncharted 4 and even on their own the scale of them in terms of the storytelling is mm. crazy by the time you get to God of War 3 and you're taking down an entire era of gods you're taking down <laughs> essentially existence as they know it in Greece at that time yeah. the scale is off the charts I think I wouldn't do too much to them. I don't think they really need modernized in terms of controls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just get them, give them the visual upgrade, the best resolutions, the best frame rate. I mm -hmm. think from a gameplay perspective, they all hold up really well. Mm -hmm. God of War 3, again, maybe this is controversial. Maybe I do have controversial takes. <laughs> I think that is my favorite. Like, oh, it, I, for me, I'm a two boy. Ah, the, the, the gameplay in 3, maybe it's because it was the only one that I didn't stream now that I think about it. But right. it was so silky smooth. It was so satisfying. It built on everything the previous two games brought to the table. And yes, it has a really daft scale, but I loved that. I mm. thought I found so much humor in it. I found so much gravitas in it. The ending of that game, I absolutely adore. And like you said, it works even better with God of War 2018 mm. and Ragnarok in mind because of how they link to it. So if that is the announcement, I would like it. If they, I mean, if they could just give us, obviously they remastered God of War 3. Like you said, it was the one that, you, one of the only ones that you can just play uh, natively and it does run really, really well. The combat system is the best thing there. Um, it depends how much work they're doing to this. Well, I think God of War 1 holds up, like they all hold up really well. But the God of War 2, it's like, again, it's like Uncharted. Uncharted 2 is where it kicked into high gear and found its like franchise footing. And I feel like God of War 2, even though 1 had things like the Hydra fight and you're fighting Ares at the end or whatever, God of War 2, like fighting the, um, the Statue of Rhodes at the very beginning, just, it 
it was so much more confident. The animation is so much more fluid in terms of the ways that you're transitioning from regular combat to the uh, quick time events. That like I just two blew me away. Like when it first came out, um, and I wonder if they went. As I was gonna say, if they go back into the older titles, do you put in things like the shoulder barge, the combo extenders from three, um, the the basic Kratos move set stuff, um, or does that break like you know parts of the experience in the originals, mm. or is it just a visual overhaul like what we've had with? Um, well, I guess until dawn change bits and pieces, but mostly Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, yeah, Zero Dawn. Um, I would take the Zero Dawn approach if you can ostensibly just give me gorgeous looking yeah. um, you know, God of War experiences because we do have a young Kratos model in the new engine from the end of uh, Ragnarok um, from the Valhalla DLC. So they maybe that was our tease all along um, because that does tie back into the Greek era. Like specifically, if people haven't played that and they're Kratos fans, God of War fans, you owe it to yourself to see that story content. Um, it is, uh, it's extremely meaningful to Kratos overall and that would segue perfectly into revisiting those eras. I guess the only thing that I would throw a spanner in the works of in terms of this project mm. is that, correct me if I'm wrong, because I think this was a few months ago and my memory is shot, but didn't Christopher Judge say that he wasn't going to voice Young Kratos if they did do Ooh, a know. remastered trilogy. I might be wrong, I'll have to mm. double check, but I think that he said when the rumors were doing the rounds, he was like, look, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. I don't want to step on the previous right. voice actor's toes. Uh, I don't think that is something I'd do. So it makes me wonder, is what this going to be alongside something Christopher Judge is doing with secret mode, like uh, secret level? Secret, secret level. Yeah. I am. Um, I wonder about, because um, there's been a couple of different voice actors for Kratos anyway. Like he's one of two, I think, um, especially on the PSP ones. I don't think it's Judge. I could be wrong, but there's definitely more than one voice actor over the years. Um, but the other side of that is what's happening with Metal Gear Solid 3 on the Konami side, where there are so many modern bits of software that can upgrade original recordings and try and make them a lot more crisp. But um, I'm curious about that. And something like God of War is a, a perfect one where you don't need to get Judge back in, which would explain yeah. why he's maybe saying, look, I'm not doing this because all the lines are already there anyway. Mm, there's a lot There's a lot going on with God of War, right? Because there there's also that Amazon TV show that yeah. I think just got a new showrunner as well. But oh, then yeah. yeah. It could be that. No one wants that. Hey. Hey, no one's if people said that about Fallout and then look where we are. Did they? They did! Ah. In me included, I was like, how are you gonna do it? How can you adapt this? Why am why this? And Fallout was, works in right, a way huh? that God of War just um I'll I'll mm. believe it when I see it. If you can cast a Kratos that makes me go, okay, no, I maybe, agree with but you there. I just I just don't believe you can do it. I don't believe there's a no. maybe Chris Judge. Yeah, Actually, there's not yeah, a human exactly. on Earth. Maybe Chris Judge. Yeah. What um, do you think though, before we move on yes. about potentially Santa Monica, Sony Santa Monica? Mm. We kind of know that Cory Barlog seems to be doing his own thing with the new IP that's been in the works for a while, mm -hmm. but it has seemed like they've got a second team that is still going to do God of War stuff. Mm -hmm. What if this is not necessarily a, a new God of War 3, but a God of War Atreus or a big God of War expansion for Ragnarok? I don't know. Maybe it's too late. Who knows? I would like it. I don't want no. an Atreus game. I know you Get don't. Get him away from me. The bits of Ragnarok where I had to play as Atreus were the worst parts, and I don't need another bow guy protagonist from a PlayStation property. Thank you very much. I am not saying that your perspective will have radically changed by becoming a father. Uh -huh. But what if you go back to Ragnarok now? Is that gonna save the repetitive gameplay that I've done for the last Not 10 the years? the repetitive gameplay, Scott Tilford, but oh. the characterization, which I know you had a little bit of a problem with it. Lots. I did a bit, that's because he's written like a Marvel quippy man. And I'm just, I'm sick of the Marvel quippy men. I remember you getting really annoyed at him being like a little terror. Yeah. Yeah, and not respecting old Kratos. No, I mean, that's the whole point in the 2018 one, but he's just, just, just annoying in, the, <laughs> in Ragnarok. He's talking to himself, doing the quips. I'm like, stop joking. Can address and just get some new moves. The, the, just, the new moves thing, I, I can never, uh, I'm not going to be able to, you know, address that for you, but I wonder. You know, it's if they do little kids are annoying, right? Yeah, they are. <laughs> well, they, they told in 2018's one they cut down the dialogue after the first reveal because everyone was complaining about Atreus being too uh, chirpy yes. in the 2018 one, but it totally worked. And um, if they do a game called God of War Atreus, I think <laughs> my brain went to the franchise is over. They, um, it's definitely a different era for it entirely. If you're if you're if you're doing a whole game on Atreus and Kratos is like a, a voice in his head or something, or, oh, you don't even have Kratos at all. Get rid of him. That's not a God of War game. But, it, <laughs> but it, it's not a seek no, but, it, but what I'm saying is it's not God of War 3. You know, it's no. a spin-off. It's, it's set in the God of War universe, you know, would have the God of War branding, but yeah. it's 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 his own story. I just think, you know, of course, 
Of course, his gameplay could have been improved in Ragnarok, but you have him playable in that game. Mm. Is that similar to what you alluded to about, you know, having the young Kratos character model? Yeah. You know, do you build that to then build on it in a future spin-off or an installment or what have you? Yeah, maybe. It's uh, it is that it is that thing. I mean, they plant enough seeds in Ragnarok to be like, this is the future of the world state. We have I mean he goes off on a whole other adventure at the end yeah. of Ragnarok. Um my thing is just that Kratos is such an immaculately written character in the last two games, especially 2018's yeah. reboot, that recontextualizes the violence, the crazy stuff, everything else from his past, um, it'll take a masterstroke to continue that when yeah. Ragnarok has a perfect ending. I agree. I agree, which is why I want to focus on Atreus, man. And mm. I, I, I get, yeah, I maybe not pick up with him at the end of Ragnarok as he as he is, maybe age him up a little bit, but I, mm. think, he's, I think he has the capacity to be a fascinating character. Again, maybe not as is, right. I mean, even though I still like him as is, but to play as him as someone who has been on, on his adventures for a few years, mm. has learned things, has gotten into conflicts and has some friction and drama in his life. What does he look like at age 23? I don't know. <laughs> if you give me like a bear button where I can, I can <laughs> switch into the bear and do some bear move, bear combos, then uh, maybe I'll be a fan. Um, the next thing for Sony uh, going into 2025 is a dedicated PlayStation Portable, a PlayStation Vita 2, I'm going to call it. That's not what its a specific name is. Um, but a dedicated PlayStation Portable is in the works, according to Bloomberg, and uh, speaking to anonymous sources. Um, Sony Group Corp is in the early stages of developing a portable console that would play its PlayStation 5 games on the move. The product is aimed at expanding Sony's reach and contending with Nintendo for the portable gaming market. According to people familiar with its development, it would also counter any potential mobile hardware from Xbox, which is why, sorry, which is working on prototypes in the category as well. Sony's portable device is likely years away from launch and the company could still decide against bringing it to market, these people had said, um, asking not to be named uh, as they were discussing private plans. This all comes after Sony released a new update for the existing PlayStation portal um, that lets PlayStation Premium members stream up to 120 PS5 games straight to the device wherever they are. Uh, even without a PlayStation 5, which is a very Xbox-centric uh, approach right now. Um, the original PlayStation Portal setup relied on beaming from a PlayStation 5 natively, but uh, right now this is a wider move to contend with Xbox's cloud streaming tech and a potential view into the future. Um, I did want to mention um, you know, that idea of a gaming industry without consoles. I think that's the, the wider conversation here. It reminded me of... Um, uh, Eve Guillermo's comments back in 2019, obviously the Ubisoft CEO, uh, speaking back in 2019 before the current uh, generation had kicked in, um, but he was saying that the upcoming generation would be the last era of consoles. Um, Guillermo said, step by step, we'll see less and less hardware. With time, I think streaming will become more accessible to many players and make it not necessary to have big hardware at home. After the current generation, at the time he was saying upcoming generation, we will be streaming all of us. No. No. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Get away from me. I have lived long enough enough to have heard the death knell of consoles <laughs> for decades at this point, Scott mm. Telford. Going into the PS4 era, that was going to be the end PC, of consoles. We're going to have PCs, apparently. We're going to yeah. have PCs and phones. No one's going to need them. Now we've got streaming. Nobody's going to need consoles. I think I think we're always going to need consoles to a certain extent. Yes, you might get a diversification in the hardware that is um, sold by the companies. We might get more mm. um, streaming, you know, handhelds or whatever it may be you might get dedicated handhelds like it sounds like this is going to be mm -hmm. but I don't think in even in the next 10 years I can't say consoles going away if PCs have been around for this long consoles are not going to go away you know people are always going to want them and want the option and I think that option is good I like the idea of Sony doing a proper handheld I think the market is there considering mm. how well and how surprisingly well the PS Portal sold yeah, and even yeah. that is a very niche system that like you said until right now beamed directly from your own PS5 so it had these limited capabilities mm -hmm. you've seen Xbox apparently getting into the game obviously the Switch and the upcoming Switch 2 has sold so well and mm. has so much interest that, yeah, I think at this point with the strength that Sony has in the market, why not release one? I guess I just hope it's supported. I hope it's reasonably priced, <laughs> which they have been struggling with recently. I doubt it. I doubt it. But, yeah, why not have one? I mean, the Vita, for all of its commercial failings, mm. was a great bit of kit. Totally. Was a solid console, so if you can just do that and convince people to buy it, which I think you might be able to in the modern era more than you could during that mm. generation, yeah, wh wh why not? The uh, the Vita fandom has come along leaps and bounds. Like, there is, there's a, a nice little active portion of that group that still um, subsists to this day, um, and I love my PlayStation Vita. I feel like Sony, it was just the marketing side of it. They should never have done a proprietary storage method for it. They should never have had their own first-party memory sticks. That's 
what killed it. Like overnight, it was like I'm not buying additional stuff. Um, at the time of release, in, a, in an uh, environment that was dominated by SD cards and micro SDs and things that people already had, um, I feel like that made people go, "We don't need this." I also think at the time, and the original PSP suffered from this as well. Uh, people didn't want uh, sort of big screen games on a, on a handheld. It hadn't really been proven that that they could do them very well. You were getting so many weird, downscaled, ugly looking games on portable, and like uh, you know the uh, the N gauge, Nokia's N gauge, like that version of Tomb Raider is like an abysmal, that's a that's a torture device. Uh, <laughs> that thing is bad. And I feel like it took the Switch and Nintendo, even though they're not known for graphical fidelity, saying, you want this, you yeah. want this, this game on the go. Um, but obviously like there is a hit on the production level um, to make a game run at a certain frame rate or a certain resolution. So I wonder how this lands. Um, you know, the, the leak mentioning PS5 games on the go, that'll have to take a massive resolution hit. Um, all be streamed, I guess, something. primarily, right? Yeah, but yeah. it's like, but even then, having an all streaming solution is what the PlayStation Portal now is. So I assume this is running something on a on, a, uh, on the hardware um, to get around the, the fact that if you're on a train, you're not maintaining a Wi-Fi yeah. connection. Like, I still think that's the underlying problem with all of this is that we don't have good Wi-Fi infrastructure <laughs> in hardly any countries in the world in terms of playing a 20-hour game, you know, consistently. Yeah, no, that's it. I think you want this new piece of hardware to be more robust. Mm. I don't think they will get a away from having streaming options because mm. the, even when they pivoted towards the PlayStation Plus catalog, which kind of prioritized downloads in a way that PS Now never did, you still have streaming as part of the True. premium tier. And I think with the success of the portal, they will probably implement that and allow them to get around the <laughs> demands of those higher end mm. PlayStation 5 games. But I think it would be a mistake to not have, um, you know, direct installations of games on the machine itself. Mm. So you don't have to rely on these connections. You don't have to rely on stream and you can get a better experience overall. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, I've explained my story with the Switch before, but I was a huge denier <laughs> of handheld gaming before right. the Switch. I could not vibe with the Game Boy. I could not vibe with the 3DS or the oh, DS. Mate. There was, I always felt, and this is ignorant of me, and I know it's not right, but I always felt like they were compromised versions of mm. the games that I would want to be playing on a standard dedicated console. And mm. it took until the Switch to convince me that, no, no, <laughs> handhelds are great. And mm -hmm. when you have these fully fledged, you know, blockbuster games running well on the handheld version of the Switch as well as the docked version, that really opened my eyes and mm. really opened, um, you know, my taste for the market, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term. And I wonder if I'm unique in that, because I don't think I am, considering no. how well the Switch sold overall. And it's not like the 3DS didn't, the DS and the 3DS sold mm -hmm. like gangbusters, but this just, I mean, there's, there's a reason they're doing a Switch 2 rather oh, yeah. than shaking up the formula.